Hey, what is going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent Axe Tech, and we got ourselves another Bit Axe Gamma. I really love these little micro miners or lottery miners, and this one was provided to us courtesy of Crypto Miner Bros, which do sell these Bit Axes. If you are interested in purchasing one, check it out. Link is in the description. Now, while we were provided this one, I do want to say that I have purchased many Bit Axes and Nerd Axes myself through the channel, such as the one right here, this one right here, and this OG one right here, but unfortunately, it's dead. Now the temperatures are a little bit hot because it's sitting next to a bunch of other hot devices, but I wanted to do something special or something different with this bit axe because I showed you in the past how you can connect to it, how you can set up the network, and how you can configure it to mine to whatever pool you want or through your own Bitcoin node locally here on your network. So right now the voltage regulator and the chip temperature is a little bit warm, but let's switch over to the computer to see what it's running at because we're about to dunk this thing and see how it performs in immersion liquid. Now, before we continue, I just wanna say, normally with these type of devices, there's no reason to actually dunk them or immerse and cool them. But I just wanted to explore and do something new with you guys with this BitAxe Gamma provided to us by Crypto Miner Bros. And if we log into the device online, we can see this thing is not running at its most optimum right now. I have it down clock and under bolted. It's only doing less than one tera hash. It's at 19.68 joules per tera hash, basically 18.6 on average. And we can see that it's only drawing anywhere between 18.5 watts to 19 watts and it's clocked at 490 megahertz with its voltage at 1.07 volts or 1070 millivolts thermally the temperatures at the peak heat of the day here in florida got about 72 but we're seeing right now around 66 and then the voltage regulator is sitting around 57 with the fan speed locked at 90 percent now when we dunk this thing or put an immersion liquid which is going to be right there next to the two overclocked and hot S19K Pros, the immersion liquid's not gonna be as cool as it could be, but I just wanna see what is the overall improvement that we get. And then obviously I'm gonna clean it out and put it back to air, but add some uh, mods to keep this device nice and cool. But it would just be a good unique way to see what exactly happens when we immerse and cool one of these Bitax Gamma. So let me benchmark first, and then we'll go show you the setup before we dunk it in the liquid. So even after some benchmarking and tweaking and tuning of this uh, particular Bitax, it seems we're hitting some thermal limits, and it could also be silicon lottery that's holding us back. But 1.18 terahash, basically an average of one terahash, and I just can't get above 500 megahertz when some of my other Bitaxes can. Uh, right now, the ASIC temperature is anywhere between 68 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, uh, sometimes 71. And the voltage regulator is sometimes 58 to 61. But right now it's 69.5 and 58 degrees Celsius respectively with the fan RPM as high as we had it before. And it just won't take any of the benchmark results uh, that the auto tuner is trying to apply or that I would like to apply above 500 megahertz. So let's go see what the actual difference is by putting this in the immersion liquid. In preparation for the immersion cooling, we obviously need to remove the fan. The screws are about an inch and a quarter long because they have to seat into the heat sink. You can see where the threads were catching onto the heat sink. Uh, this heat sink's not on all the bit axes that I use, but uh, this is what we got with the Crypto Miner Bros version. And we obviously had to remove the PCB from the 3D printed housing with four more screws. And now a couple different tricks I need to deploy before we dunk this thing. Let me show you what we got going on in the garage. All right, so I got the five volt power that we need uh, a brick that I really don't care about if it it gets ruined it gets ruined it's okay uh, the original brick that came with this a particular unit is still in the house and then we have a dummy adapter uh, for the fan uh, this usually runs on your what's miners and some of your other ASICs that don't allow you to control the fans or allow the unit to continue to hash without a fan signal being detected so this is just a dummy adapter to make the unit think that a fan is working. And so now we just need to open a lid and slide it on in there. We could use the side ports on my immersion tank, but that's already screwed tight. And even if we could get it in there, it will be way too tight to even have this extra wire. So we're just gonna open a lid and drop it on in there. Just like so, we got it hashing away. And because this fluid is not electrically conductive, um, the unit sitting on top of the frame of the S19K Pro is not a big deal. Uh, temperatures right now are leveling around 65.2 C and the liquid temperature overall is 41 degrees Celsius 
uh, and it's during the peak heat of the afternoon here in Florida, uh, this liquid can get down to around 36 degrees uh, Celsius during the evening, uh, 28, 26 during really cold evenings during the winter. But you can see the heat convection as it flows out the top of the ASIC and then water falls over into where the pump assembly is to then get cycled through the dry cooler to keep the liquid nice and cool. So let's switch over to the computer and see what this thing is sitting at, the bit axe is sitting at online. So while we're sitting on the, around the same hash rate, uh, we dropped our temperatures on the voltage regulator from around 59 to 50. It's right now it's at 40 to 7 degrees Celsius. I did just reboot it. Um, and then the core temperatures dropped down from almost 70 to 62, 63. So while we did improve the thermal headroom, uh, I wonder if I'm able to at least apply some, you know, better overclocks to get this thing close to 1.2 terahash. You can see the fan RPM just actually went from 72 to 71. That's the dummy adapter because it's on auto. So it's sending a false signal so the machine can continue to hash. So we're still getting around the same hash rate as we were before, but our temperatures severely uh, went down, which is a good thing. Let's see if the benchmark will actually work. After some time, we were able to successfully run the benchmark and it came up with a number of different configurations. Now this device is able to hit the hash rate that I expected it to hit off rip, but it's in immersion liquid. The increased thermal headroom has allowed us to outstrip maybe the silicon lottery as this chip is not performing as well as it should have been from the jump on air. And even though our peak temperature is 66C on the chip and 48 on the voltage regulator, you can see we're running at 650 megahertz now with an average of 1.22 terahash. And I've constantly been seeing it around 1.38 to 1.5 terahash so this thing is definitely clocking very well and we even hit a peak of 1.68 terahash so the immersion liquid with a really golden sample chip would definitely be 1.7 1.78 terahash which is extraordinary uh, but that's what immersion liquid does that's what immersion cooling does is allow you to push your chips your cores your uh, asics harder than they were on air but we do need to remove this device from the immersion liquid because i do believe at least with the wire the power cable that it's going to ruin the uh, power brick again i'm sacrificing the power brick but if we leave it in there long term uh, i will show you what exactly happens for example this cable right here right this was elastic and you could bend it to fit into the asic and that's what it was doing but now it's rigid I can barely bend it and sometimes these rubber, uh, I guess you say covers or surrounding the actual electrical wires gets brittle over time and can degrade. So you never want to leave something in immersion liquid that you don't intend to leave in long term. Like the cables powering the ASICs right now, that's going to be their home until I move on from these ASICs or upgrade the ASICs. But this wire was adapted and it is too brittle uh, to use anymore. I would not feel safe using this anymore. So that power cable just sitting in that oil, just for this evening or 24, 48 hours, not really a big deal. Um, but if you're not going to sacrifice this power cable, I wouldn't recommend doing it. But the bit axe is running really good. We could see it down in there uh, hashing away. Again, doing about 1.4 tera hash 1.22 average right now it's at 1.388 sitting around 65.6 on the chip and 49 on the voltage regulator so this thing would love sitting in here long term but i'm not going to leave it in there long term instead we're going to do some cooler mods to it in different videos so stay tuned for that but that's going to do it for today thank you so much to crypto miner bros for allowing us to get this beautiful white uh well it's not white right now but this beautiful white pcb bit axe from them you can purchase your own bid axe from the link down in the description but do me a favor on the way out make sure to hit that like button get subscribed hit notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and i'll catch you in the next one take care